first recorded sighting of the monster was by St Columba in AD 565. All around the world you mention Loch Ness and people immediately, they know about it. The, the myth goes that there's a great big plesiosaur, prehistoric beast. That lurks beneath the surface of one of the deepest lochs in Europe, which is in, it's up in the highlands of Scotland. It's a beautiful and uh, kind of brutal, desolate landscape. The kind of haunting backdrop of Loch Ness, it sort of lends itself to horror, mystery, murder. We're filming in a fictional village called Loch Nefoy um, by Loch Ness. Loch Ness is a very big tourist attraction. It was knee deep in Japanese, Chinese, German, Italian tourists. We would come late in the day and shoot into the evening, and that way we could get control of the streets. Inverness is one end, and Fort Augustus is where it stays the other, and it took, I think it's about an hour drive all the way down it. It's also quite difficult to film because there are two roads round about it. It's a very fast road with lots of traffic on it, so it's difficult to find a position to film the lock. The one on the west side is single track road, so you can't park any of the trucks. So but it's very difficult to get an angle on the loch. We're spoiled because we have so many lochs. Uh, we have so many mountain ranges. So we can cheat a little and water looks like water, but we have shot quite a lot on Loch Ness. On the boat, we had like something that read the depth and how deep it was. I just could not believe it. You look at those large expanses of water and how still they are, this dark and dead. And you just think, if anything is possible, it's going on under there, so who knows? It's interesting to set it where there's a fictional monster because suddenly there, there is a monster in their village, but it's a human being. You have a cold-blooded predator in your town. Anybody who lives in the village is a, is a potential suspect. Well, you think this is a community? A bunch of people drawn together by lies. This drama really taps into what lurks beneath. There is a monster locked away in all of us. That monster is a rage, it's a secret, it's something you don't want to let out that can cause a lot of, a lot of devastation. But the landscapes and the weather and the moodiness is something we're using to try and give the whole thing a darkness. There's a feeling of, of, of immense tension. And the water metaphors are working very well. On the surface, everything seems fine, but underneath there's something really rather nasty. And with the light and everything, and you know, the, the, the weather comes in so quickly, it changes so much. It's really beautiful up there. Really dramatic backdrops. We've been taking the crew to some quite remote and difficult locations. And we found a slate quarry near Glencoe called Balahulish. But in the second block of filming, we found another slate quarry near Aberfoyle and Trossachs, which is breathtaking. We used uh, a mountain rescue team to carry the equipment. We've had to use four-wheel drive, quad bikes to get even the actors in. Yeah, it's just tricky. And, and the insects, yeah. We have this thing called the midgey, which I'm sure everyone knows. We've used two kinds of drone. We used the air drone f flying over the water, over the mountains, over roads, following cars, following actors, following boats. We've also used an underwater drone to get footage of the, the loch bed, to get footage of the v various plants and plant life that live down there, footage of the underside of the boats, footage of the drone going from above the waterline, under waterline, and we will mix that with visual effects, who are going to film in a tank with a body to be one of our murder victims. And in the post-production process, we will mix those two elements together to give us a really a pucker underwater sequence. the feeling of tension and you create the feeling of unsettledness. you any idea how bad this looks? By the subtle use of the steady cam, by the subtle use of handheld, by the subtle use of the environment, and also just slightly off-framing what should normally be kind of perfect composition. Laura's a very instinctive actress. I was a big fan of her work, so she was one of the reasons I took the job, actually. Do you regard him as a suspect? Everyone's a suspect. No, they're not. 
It's brilliant having such strong women at the heart of things. The girls are taking over, definitely. They kind of adore each other and there's this big friendship that's, that's kind of grown between them and I think it's reflected in their performances. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving working with Siobhan. I cannot get through a scene without giggling. Yeah, we're not great at keeping our faces straight. We do, we've done it a couple of times, obviously, because otherwise they'd have no footage. We can't even actually look at each other's faces. I have to look slightly to the left of her ear, and she has, or we take turns, it's like a tag team, so I'll go, I'll look at you, then you look away, then I'll look at, you know. Yeah, we found out pretty early on that we were gigglers together. <laughs> it's those two. They, they set each other off, and uh, if I happen to be there, I'm caught in the crossfire. I'm nothing to do with that. I'm a consummate professional. He's another hilarious one. I've never met anyone with so much persistent energy. Against them. And it's quite a dark subject matter, this, so it's always great to have a bit of a giggle. 